Hello everyone, Amity Sensei here. Today I will teach you how to use Illustrator on iPad. This is an app anyone can use, even those who are new to Illustrator. So today we will be making these stylish geometric patterns. Let's open up Illustrator. First we have to make a new canvas, and you can find a button for that at the bottom left. Go ahead and press that. Now it shows us many different canvas sizes. If we look at the tabs at the top here, we have options like printing, screen, and illustration. Today we'll go with the web large option under screen. This is 1920 times 1080, and this is what we are going to use today. Now we have a lot of buttons lined up on the left and right sides. The left side buttons are called the toolbar, while the right side buttons are the taskbar. There is also this round button in the bottom left corner, which is called the touch shortcut button. We are going to start with something basic today, so let's use the shape tool. The shape tool is around the middle of the toolbar. When we press this, we can make shapes like squares, circles, triangles, and stars really easily. Just by selecting this tool and dragging your Apple Pencil across the screen, they pop up. When you are making triangles though, there is a bar you can slide on the right side here. By sliding this, you can make it into a square or a pentagram. It basically lets you increase the number of angles. And if you want to change colors, press on the shape in the bottom left here. This is the color button, and you can do so. It comes up as a color wheel, so you can just move around the wheel and change the color like this. Looking at the tabs on top, we have a button labeled Gradation. Press this, and you can easily make a cool looking gradient like this here. You can also easily change the degree and the color of the gradation. For the color, press the button corresponding to the side you want to change, and then go around the color wheel. It's looking good. As for changing the size, when you want to adjust the shape, just touch it and hold the bounding box around the shape and then drag it. And if you want to change the aspect ratio, do the same thing while you're holding the touch shoka at the bottom left. This way you can maintain that perfect circle shape while adjusting the sides up or down. The undo function uses two fingers. If you keep pressing the screen with two fingers, you shuffle through previous iterations. It's like Command Z on a desktop. And if you touch the screen with three fingers, it will shuffle forward through new iterations. Two fingers for undo, and three fingers for redo. Now we are going to try making a geometric shape. First, make a circle in the middle of the screen. When you select it, you'll see a bunch of buttons show up beneath it. These are called common actions and they're meant to help you work more quickly and efficiently. Even without using the bars on the sides, you can use these to speed through your work. For example, the second button from the right is the copy button. Press it and you can easily copy objects like this. Next, we are going to change the colors and the lines. In between the color buttons, there are these little arrows. Press them, and it makes the lines blue and the inside clear. With it like this, we are going to make the circle a bit bigger, and place it, so that it overlaps with the other one. To change the thickness of the lines, tap the circle, and in the common actions bar, there's a button to do that. It's the second one from the left. It's really easy. To move things, press the top button on the toolbar, this is the Move tool. It lets you move objects. But if you have an object that's kind of hard to grab, you can also press this cross button in the common actions bar here. This is also the Move tool. Just press and hold that button, and you can move the shape around normally. Sometimes with small objects, it's really hard to select them, so you can use this trick for that. Next, we'll make a new pink circle, and kind of put it on top like so. For this, we change the layer order by going to the layer panel on the right hand side. Right now, we have the pink circle in the middle here, but we are going to press and hold it and move it down to the bottom. 
you can see that the positions of the circles have changed. As we move the layer up to the top though, suddenly the pink circle is closest to us. You can do this all from the layer panel, but you can also use the layer settings in the common actions bar. Just by playing with this slider, you can change whether the circle is on top or below the others. Now we are going to switch to a join mode. You can find this setting in the property panel on the top right, where we also have settings for the color, lines, and opacity. Right above that, we have a join mode. By changing this setting, we can change how the overlapping colors blend together. For example, if we pick multiple mode, the colors where the circles overlap become darker, like they are mixing together. There are other options like overlay, hard light, linear burn-in, color burn-in, lots of different options. So you should explore and find which option works the best for you. Next, I'm going to use a square to make a rhombus-like design. It's easy to rotate a square once you make it, so let's do that. Then we'll copy it. I'm going to move it downwards. Now I want to change the color. To do that, we use this dropper tool in the color section. Pick it, move your cursor where you want, and it will pick up the color, and you can change the color easily. Let's talk about groups next. This feature lets you put a number of different objects together. First, select all the things you want to put into a group. There is a button for making groups in the shared action bar, and if you press it, these objects that were originally all split up become one thing. You can see the group in your layer list as well, and if you open it, you can see the smaller objects separately. By doing this, it makes moving the objects easier, and it's really convenient for adjusting sizes too. And if you ever want to adjust the size of one of the group's objects, just double tap on it and you can select each object separately. Don't bother deleting the group and then adjusting them. Just double tap the object you want to adjust and do it that way. I also want to mention this cool feature called Repeat Grid. First, just make a small circle. You don't need to care too much details on this. Select it, and at the very button of the taskbar on the right, there is a Repeat button. When you press that, you get options for Repeat Radial, Repeat Grid, and Repeat Mirror. Try pressing the first one, Repeat Radial. 
This makes the circle we just made into a really cool pattern. It's an easy way to make a floral design. If you play with the slider on the right, you can change the number of circles. And if you double tap, just by moving one of the circles, you can also move the other circles in the same way. It's a pretty interesting feature. Once again, this is called Repeat Radial. I'm just going to talk about one more cool feature called Repeat Grid. Just like before, we start by making one circle, and then we press the Repeat button on the right side, and choose Repeat Grid. Unlike with Repeat Radial, this lines up the circles horizontally and vertically. This way you can copy them horizontally forever. When you look at the bottom of the property panel here, there is an option called Grid Type. Change this, and you can change how the circles are lined up. You could make them alternate or keep them even, for example. If you're making a pattern, alternating circles might look nicer, so give it a try and see. Let's finish up here. I'm going to put some text in the middle using the text tool. Text options are usually in the property panel on the right side, right here. If you scroll to the bottom, there are options to change the font, text color, and spacing. As for the text size, you can either slide your pen across this part here, or use the common actions. Just slide your pen here, and you can change the text really easily. The same goes for the spacing. Spacing refers to how much empty space we put between the letters. We can change this both from the property panel or using the common actions bar. Finally, we are going to paste in some images. To do this, we can press the picture button and scroll through our camera roll to choose some favorite pictures. And just like this, we can paste it in. We have a circle in the very middle, right? I want to put this picture into that circle, and this needs a different procedure. You have to select the object, then go into the Pictures tab and choose your picture. Then the picture will show up inside the circle. You can also change the size after too, so the woman is in the center. And we are done! For this design, all I did was use the shape tool, repeat grid, and add a picture. This is something that anyone can do, so everyone at home, please try following along. This is all for today. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button down below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I make videos on tips and hacks on iPad, so please do that too. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!